I am Spencer Elwood, and today I'm going to be talking to Shane Stewart, the uh, writer and director of the recent autopilot picture short film, The Pine. Shane, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. I'm excited to talk about this thing that I've been sitting on for way too long. Yeah, <laughs> it has been a crazy process. You know, I, I remember you sending me some of the original ideas for it and talking about it, and it's been, a, it's yeah, been crazy, I've, man. It definitely has been crazy. I'm excited to finally have it out there. I'm excited for people to finally be able to see it. Um, I've had, you know, I've done some small premieres and showings of it before, but nothing nothing quite final like this. This is the first time that the the entire world has a chance to finally see it. So I'm, I'm excited, and I'm excited to talk about it today. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm excited for people to watch it. I really like this short. It's super cool. And uh, yeah, today we're just going to kind of talk for a little bit first about some of the pre-production concepting ideas, shooting behind the scenes stuff. And then I think we're going to do a little bit of a, a commentary, man. Watch the thing and talk about it. Hell yeah, man. I'm it's going to be exciting. Okay, so I guess my first question, always whenever you watch something, you're, you wonder, what kind of influenced this? Who influenced this? So that's kind of the first thing is, is what filmmakers influenced you as like a filmmaker, but also on this specific project? Um... I mean, as a as a filmmaker, I tend to go for I don't know. I there's there's so many different people that I've been influenced by over over my lifetime. The one that I always I'm always drawn to the most, it feels like is is David Fincher. Um, just uh, I mean, like his directing is impeccable. The stories that he is involved with and helps create are insane. Some of my favorite movies of all time. Um, other other directors that have also influenced, I mean, like Stanley Kubrick, and I'm going to talk more about The Shining in a minute, but Stanley Kubrick has been also a big, um, a big inspiration of mine. You won't see much of either of them, I think, of their direct, like, influence in the directing of this. Like, I kind of went a different way with how I directed it rather than as kind of as as clean and clinical as their directing styles can be. Um, especially for things like The Shining, like there, there's not, it's not quite the same as The Shining. Although I took a lot of uh, inspiration for ideas from The Shining, you know, it's a lot about you know cabin fever and you know slowly going insane together and that kind of thing. Like there's a lot of that DNA more in the script than in the direction. Um, as far as direction for the short, um, I don't know, like. Like specific things for the short. I don't know if there's anything in particular that I like was like honing myself based on. Um, like for the writing, specifically The Shining, like that a lot of those ideas are there. But for the direction, um, I don't know. Like I, I was trying to go for more of like kind of like a kind of schlocky 80s kind of B-movie horror vibe. Um, and, I mean, because that was, you know, it's a, it was a no-budget thing, and so I, I couldn't make it feel expensive and stylish. It had to feel, uh, like, kind of cheap, you know? And so I, I wanted to lean into that a little bit. So if you look at even, even things down to, like, the poster that I created for it, I tried to kind of lean into that, like, vintage kind of horror feel. Um and I hope that that came across in the film. Oh, it absolutely does. I I definitely see all of that, and I love it. Um, so I guess talking also, this is a a horror thriller short. How has horror influenced you as a filmmaker? Because it's such a you know wide genre, but it's also very niche when you get deep into it. Yeah. Um, for the longest time, I was the biggest chicken about horror. Um, like. I, I was not a big horror guy. Like, The Shining. I mean, it's still probably to this day, like, my favorite horror movie. Um, but there was not much in my life that I I clung to when it came to horror. I mean, like, when we wrote when I wrote this idea, um, I still hadn't had watched um, as much horror as I have now. You know, now I'm much more into that. Now, having been a part of it... Um, it got me a lot more interested in it, and I'm much less of a chicken when it comes to that that kind of thing. Um, I know Im how important 
um, like horror storytelling at set pieces are to not only horror as a genre, but other genres outside of horror, you know? Um, there's so many people who talk about how how good of a like horror director like Spielberg can be um, and like how his how some of his really most famous action set pieces are horror set pieces. You know, they would make just as much sense in like a Freddy Krueger movie as they do in Jurassic Park. That's supposed to be a big fun action movie about dinosaurs. But it's like there are some actually like really tense and scary moments um so as as like a as a as a film goer especially earlier in my career especially when I was making this and before I was not much of a horror person although I respected it um I just I'm too I I'm too weak-willed for uh for a for a horror movie but I I'm much more into it now Yeah I I you and I are kind of similar in that way we talk about that quite a bit is that Horror was a genre I think you and I kind of both wrote off in, in in a fraction of a way, just always appreciating it and understanding the the merits of it, but kind of looking at it a little bit like this is just not for me. I'm not going to dive into this world. And I think that's changed for both of us. You and I both kind of talk about a lot of the up and coming filmmakers that are are horror horror directors and they're they're amazing. There's so many amazing horror movies nowadays where it felt like I don't know like. Growing up, it didn't have the same respect as it does now. Like you see people like Ari Aster or um, uh, Robert Eggers. Is that his name? Robert Eggers. Yeah, the Robert Eggers. The yeah, witch. I mean, yeah, he directed <laughs> the, yeah the witch and uh, like I mean like those are they're not they're nothing like you know Friday the Thirteenth. But, the, you know, it's like you were talking earlier. There was, like, there's niche genres within the, like, horror community. And 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 this, like, new up-and-coming, like, art. You know, this, like, this neo-artistic avant-garde horror is, like, so great. I love, um, I mean, like, Hereditary and Midsummer were, like, my favorite movies of the years that they came out. Like, if not my favorite, like one of my favorite of the movies of the year that those movies came out. Um, so like I definitely have much more respect for horror and what it can do and what it can be now more than I did um, a while back. Absolutely. I mean, I'm sure a lot of that came from living in a world where you were prepping a short. I mean, it takes a lot to commit to a project, you know, and so whenever you do, for you sure. got to dive in deep. Yeah. Um, so I guess that's kind of good transition point. Like, how did this particular project get started? Like, where was the uh, the jumping on point for you? Um, my friend and colleague and Autopilot Pictures co-founder, along with you, um, came to me and uh, another another friend of ours and said, "Hey, I've got this cool, creepy cabin. We should shoot some stuff there." And then he tasked us each, all three of us, each with uh, coming up with a few pitches for ideas that we can write and shoot and, you know, do out there. Um, and so I came up with, you know, I came up with what became the pine. Um, and then I had some other really weird ideas. Like one of my ideas was like a, like war for the planet of the apes was about to come out and I was super, I'm super into the, like the new planet of the ape series. Um, and so I actually came up with like a fan film companion piece um, to the uh, to the the Planet of the Apes movies. I still want to make that. I still really like that idea. Um, but we all you know got together one day and pitched all our ideas. And um, obviously the Planet of the Apes one was the first one to go because nobody else liked it as much as I did. Um, but everybody really seemed to latch on to the idea for the pine. Um, and so they said, all right, let's go with that one. And so uh, then I started writing and uh, more pre-production, and here we are now. Yeah, so that uh, that original idea, like where did that come from? Because it, you know, the Cabin in the Woods uh, theme is so relevant in horror, and it's been done a million different ways, and this still feels very fresh. Like it feels like a cool take on the Cabin in the Woods story. Yeah, like I... I I did some reading, like I read some short stories and things like that. So there's definitely some borrowed ideas from other places. 
Um, like specifically like r slash no sleep. There's some, some really good cabin stories, uh, that I borrowed some ideas from. Um, but like, uh, the idea of being isolated and the, you know, like when you're out in the middle of nowhere, like just like that cabin is, I mean, you're out, you're alone. Um, and that, and that fear of that isolation and that fear of being left alone and being, um, you know, abandoned, uh, I think is really what drove a lot of, of, of the characters, you know, is, is that fear of like being abandoned out in the middle of nowhere. Um, so yeah, I think, yeah, like, uh, I, I borrowed a lot from, from things that I had read, but you know, I, I wanted, I wanted to play with the idea of isolation and ab abandonment. And I think you can see a lot of that in, in the characters that are on screen. Oh, I, I agree, man. Every time I watch it and I've seen it five or six times, you know, uh, at various stages, I, I pick up on new things and I'm like, oh, th this jerk is a genius. He's just figured it <laughs> out, you know? Um, well, I appreciate that. That's very cool. Yeah. And you know what? Well, like while writing it, because I like I was talking about earlier, it's so hard to commit to a project because there are so many ideas that all of us who want to make movies have. Yeah. What was it about this like specific thing? Because it can range from doability. You know, uh, Tucker came to you and was like, "Hey, I have this cabin. We can go out and shoot something cool." Did it range like that? And then you had the idea, or is isolation something you think you kind of like gravitate to? as a filmmaker and things like that. So like, what was, what was it about this specific situation that made the stars align and you decided to jump on and do it? It was definitely a big part of it was, um, just the cabin itself. Like it, it has such a character in its, in itself. Like it's so creepy and like weird, like it's got weird little idiosyncrasies. Like when you get inside it and you spend much time in it, you notice all the weird little things about it. The little bunny sitting outside. The disturbing yeah. ass little bunny <laughs> sitting out there. Yeah. Um, and like the fact that the bedrooms are lower, like you have to step down into the bedrooms to like, it's, it's like a weird, it's like split level, but not by a few feet. It's by like a foot and a half. It's just strange. It's just strange little. And there's like the side secondary. It's a, it's a very strange place. And it was just filled with like character. Like we, you know, uh, Tucker and you and I all had spent, uh, a weekend out there, um, before. And like it, it that in itself was its own, like horror movie journey of just like being out in the middle of the woods in this, like, I mean, like the cabin had not been taken much, had not been as, it was not as, it was not in as good condition as it is currently, um, as it was when we shot the pine, like they had put some more work into it and made it a little nicer. But when we were out there, it was a little rough. And so, um, so much of like that kind of that idea of, you know, the short came from my experience having already been there and knowing what it was capable of and knowing the surrounding area and kind of the vibe that came off of it. Um, and then like uh, when it comes to like abandonment, um, there, there are people in my personal life that have, uh, dealt with, you know, that intense fear of, um, uh, of abandonment. And so a lot of the, the, uh, actual, lines are things that I, I've been told things that I've said, things that I've been a part of. Um, so, so much of that is, is very personal to me and the people that I've dealt with that with, you know? Um, so I really tried to make it, make the characters make, um, you know, feel, make them feel like Steve and Liz, make them feel as, as realistic as possible, not make, Liz, just another, you know, slasher woman, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't want her to just be another, like, oh, no, like, damsel in distress, like, getting her head chopped off 10 minutes later. I wanted, her, wanted to make, make it deeper than just a slasher movie, more than just um, the, like, surface level thing. I wanted to make it feel a little bit more real. Absolutely. And the, there's an interesting moment at the beginning that we'll talk about on the commentary, but it, it struck me that exact idea. It wasn't a slasher. 
film. It wasn't. Yeah. It was its own different thing, which is very cool. But, um, you know, it's a 20 plus minute short film. Uh, how long was the shoot, you know? Um, I'll get into this a little bit more later as we talk more about it. But, like, it was originally just supposed to be like three days, like, which is insane to think about. Um, cause it, like, I think the script is like 18 or 19 pages. Um, and so like trying to do that in three days, like our, we had like a skeleton crew. It was literally, it was me, uh, our sound engineer, engineer Sergio, who also helped me out with lighting and grip and, uh, you know, electric and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, our assistant camera, Andrew, who also helped with, you know, kind of production stuff um, and like AD kind of stuff. Um, he like it was literally just the three of us. And then Tucker, who produced it, was also in it. Um, so like we were all filling 10 different roles um, and just blowing and going as fast as we could. Um, for so many of it, I tried to hold takes as long as I could. You know, there, I, you know, there are several moments that are longer takes so I could, you know, not only because I think that, you know, might help with the suspense and help with the tension and help with, uh, you know, the, you know, cinematography, making it look prettier, uh, but also to help on the production side of not needing 10 different angles of the same moment, you know, um, it was originally supposed to be those three days. And then there were a couple of more shoots after the fact, uh, to finish out some of the other, the other scenes. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, how those came about as we continue to talk. Exciting, man. Yeah. Um, so uh, another interesting thing is uh, writing versus shooting. So like on the page, what was the hardest scene for you to really like smooth out and figure out what it was and what you were trying to say? And in and, and, and that, in any, any capacity really, on the page, what was the most difficult? Um... Uh, I, you know, I don't know. I think probably like the character stuff, like those little moments, trying to make them feel as real as possible and not feel too on the nose, not feel too saccharine, you know? Uh, so probably like the moment with Liz and Steve in bed where they're talking about the cabin and her dreams and her fears, um, like, I think that was probably the hardest thing in the writing room uh, to really nail and make it feel real. And I also wrote a lot of this very much with the intent to improvise and to change. Like I wanted the actors to take as much of themselves and put it in it and change it uh, to make it work with them as much as possible. I wanted it to feel um, like them on the, you know, or at least, or at least a character that they can create, you know, a, a character that they understand fully. Um, like we talked a lot about before we started shooting, we talked a lot about like what and how and why all these characters are doing these things, um, and their motivations and, uh, Tucker and specifically Haley who played Liz, who's badass. 10 out of 10 would recommend to hire her on any of your, she's uh, amazing. She was in a short film. I did yeah. uh, agreed. Hire her. <laughs> um, I like, she like was really, um, you know, put her herself as much as he could and helped me kind of form and create Liz as uh, you know, she, she's as deserves just as much of credit in that as, as I do, or, you know, you do. Cause you helped me a lot. Um, drafting and editing and changing and, and improving the script as, as I was going through the scripting process. Yeah, dude, it's, it's a, you know, it's the old writer's thing where you think you have gold and then somebody reads it and you feel really weird about all the mistakes, not because they say anything, but because you're all of a sudden, wait, what do they think? And then you think deep. It, it, that's the yeah. most important part of writing is, is rewriting and getting other people's opinions and I didn't help much on that. I, I kind of just gave you a, a few notes and you took it and ran and made this this great thing out of it, you know? Yeah. Um, so likewise with shooting, what was the, the scene either practically the hardest or like hardest to kind of figure out how you wanted to approach it? Like a, any any type of difficulty, what was the one that kind of stuck out to you as being really difficult? One in particular that sticks out really heavy in my mind is the scene 
at the end where she's running through the forest at night. Um, that was actually like a reshoot. Not a reshoot. It was another, it was an additional shoot after we were done with the, the primary shoot on location in Lake of the Pines, Texas. Um, that was particularly tough because it was just me. And it, or it was just me, Tucker, and Haley. Like it was just the three of us. We had no other support in any way. And so like there were a lot of mistakes that I made to make it even harder for us to shoot. Um, and so that was particularly difficult to really like nail. Um, and I think I, and there are a lot of production errors that I look at and kind of cringe when I watch, but I think it for some, for other people who may watch it, they might like those things, you know, like just how unsteady the camera is. Like the camera isn't supposed to be as shaky as it is. Um, but, uh, I think for other people, they might look at that and see the, you know, the frantic motion and the fear in the camera work as well as in the actress, you know? Um, but me watching it, I'm like, ah, it's just, it's like, and like there were other production things like I, you know, for just in terms of lighting, like I literally had one light when we were out there, one handheld light. I didn't even have a bounce and I needed a bounce uh, to be able to like fill in some of those shadows, especially when uh, Haley's looking at the camera. Um, and so her flashlight is supposed to be going past the camera, not like, you know, shining into it. So we need to be able to see her face. And I didn't have a bounce to bounce her flashlight back, flashlight light back at her. And so what I did is I literally had to use Tucker's stomach to bounce <laughs> the light back. Like I literally was just like, Hey Tucker, take your shirt off. DIY. Um, <laughs> and just DIY. I mean like, and that the shot with Haley where it's really close up on her face as she can hear the, you know, the, the, the monster, the whatever out in the forest running towards her. And she begins to back up and run away. That's my favorite shot in the entire short. And it was literally created using Tucker's stomach as a bounce. Yeah, this is this is the one um, where, where she's facing the camera and then she turns and illuminates everything and runs off that one. Yes. It's yeah. Absolutely my favorite shot in the short as well. It's just I, so I love it. Amazing. I love it. And it, that was I mean, that was a that was a difficult shoot too, because we I mean we're out in the middle of a wooded area out in the middle of the night and it's, you know, dark and it's hot and we're all running around. And I mean, Haley was such a trooper. Like when there's the moment where she like hits her head against the, the log and gets knocked out. I have that, that moment. And, uh, like, I mean, like I had to shoot that several times and she, in order to do it, like I literally had to tell her to like put her head up against the log and then whip her head back as if she just hit it. And she had to do it like uh, several times. And like, I mean, like I just feel bad. She was an absolute trooper and an absolute bad ass. Um, and I will always appreciate uh, how, how far she went to help uh, create this. Yeah. I uh, just, again, tooting her horn. Yeah. I, I remember this uh, where she was in my short and, it was like 2 a.m. and all of us were, you were DPing that for me. It was, it was exhausting. We've been shooting for like four or five hours by that point. And we were just talking about whether or not we just needed to call it for that. She's like, I, I got 45 minutes left in me and we're all dead. And she's just like, what's up? Let's go. Let's keep going. She's the best. Yeah, man. She will make any project you work on better. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I, I think going from shooting into editing, because that's, you know, a full phase of this is post-production, you know, and uh, a lot of people make movies with the philosophy that they're saved in the edit. You know, that's a very common yeah. expression. What is something that changed for you in the edit? Like something like you had a vision for how it was going to go and you knew it. And then whenever you get in the edit, you had just a new idea and you did it and it worked out better. You know, is there is there a specific instance of that? Um, the very, very beginning and the very, very ending. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, the beginning... I, it starts with her waking in the script. It starts with her waking up in the car and, and them having that conversation. And then it goes into, uh, you know, them in the cabin and then them waking up and, uh, or, and then, you know, uh, talking about their fears. And then it goes into the nightmare. That's supposed to be the first, like, quote unquote, you know, horror element. Um, but that's like 
10 minutes or 15 minutes of nothing of, or not, not nothing of very important, um, like character things, but it was like, it didn't set the tone that I wanted to. And so once I was in editing, I was like, we need, uh, we need to see the dream. We need a, a moment where we actually sees what, see what she's seeing and to, to feel what she's feeling. And so that moment came entirely, um, in the edit. Um, like I realized that oh, this just does not work the way I want it to. I, I need to, I need to add something. And so that came from while we were in the editing and in the, the very, very ending, I was like, while watching the, you know, one of the first edits, I was like, is what I'm trying to do here going to sell? Like, are people going to get kind of what I'm trying to say, specifically when she's after she hits her head and she's woken up in the quote unquote pine, like, do people know where she is? Do they know what's happening? And so just using audio that I already had and f literally just a loop of like a three second shot that I already had, I added a little post credit sequence of, you know, uh, Liz calling out for Steve and then a uh, switch to the exact same shot of, but with a different vibe. And then you can hear Steve calling out for Liz and neither can hear the other. Um, like that came completely from the edit. That was one of the last things that I added um, was that moment after the credits. And I, was, I, I knew I needed something to sell it a little more and I love it. I think it is a really, um, really cool and really, vibey i like it i like i like that scene it is it is very cool and I, I remember when you sent that to me while in the editing process and i don't think you told me it was in there so it happened i was like whoa interesting like i ain't got to talk to him about this now um so this is a very cool idea and i love that that came from the edit you know that you just decided yeah and you know another another interesting thing about your short is uh you had an original score this was not yes. temp music this was not um any sort of like Composed solely on a computer based on something like what is that? Uh, that software, um, Filmstro, Filmstro, yeah, it wasn't a Filmstro thing, it was it was a original score and it works so well within your short, like it kind of perfectly fits in in a very unique way. Like it's not the, the type of music you would 100% expect, but it works 100%. Yeah, um, the score was written and created and performed all by my brother, uh, Jake Stewart. And uh, yeah, like it's it's literally my favorite part of the short is his score. Um, I, I we talked me and him talked a lot about what we wanted from the score and what and my ideas. I sent him a lot of reference stuff, a lot of things that I really liked. I sent him even like sound packs that I thought could be useful and like stringed instruments and things like that. And, and my original idea was very, very, very shining inspired. So I wanted a lot of atonal pizzicato strings and, uh, uh, a I want it to be very, very string focused, um, but also like heavily digitally manipulated. Um, and when I, I, and Jake talked to me and he said, oh, okay, well, I've got some other ideas. Let me throw some stuff at you. And he sent me the first scene um, where she wakes up and, or the, or no, not where she wakes up, when she's having the dream. He sent me that, um, the, what he wrote for it. And I was like, okay, do that for the rest of it. And, uh, and, and that's exactly how it came out. I was, you know, uh, it was not what I was expecting, but I think it was exactly what it needed. I mean, specifically, I mean, I talked earlier, I talked about how we wanted, I wanted kind of like a more vintage feel to it and the, you know, synth and, oh, like it added, it added that it may, it pushed that even further in a way that I could not have ever dreamed. Um, and so I'm very pleased uh with with how the score came out and it was not what i was expecting but it was what exactly what it what it needed yeah man oh it's it's so good um and i you know the last question before before the uh, actual commentary uh what's the big lesson from this do you think I mean, i'm every project you work on there's a million but what's like the big takeaway thing you're going to take moving forward and really employing and using and and, and uh 
growing from? What's the what's the big thing? I think a, I think a big thing will be trying not to bite off more than I can chew. I think, um, you know, I like I said, we it was a it was a tiny crew, and I was uh, directing, I was DPing, I was editing, I was. I did everything. Um, and I, and, you know, and including like I had Sergio who could help me out with lighting, but even then I, I took the, took the, the lead on that of, of setting up all the lighting and stuff. And I think there are things that I missed and things that I wanted to do that I wish I would have taken the time to do. And if I had more of a crew behind me, if I had a DP, if I had even just one grip, um, and then, you know, like if I had more people behind me to where I could be the director and focus on the directing, um, I would have been better off. Um, and like, and trying to shoot a 20 page script in three days is just insane. You know, um, I think, I think there's a lot in terms of that that I'll take away from this project, you know, of of not trying to bite off more than I can chew and like, you know, because, you know, not only does that put strain on me, it puts strain on my actors, it puts strain on the other crew members. It would just be easier if each of us had our role that we could focus on entirely or at least have a main role with some secondary tasks that we, you know, we, each of us could, you know, take care of. And that's the nature of indie film is, you know, you're not, you're not doing just one job, you're doing multiple, but giving myself every opportunity to succeed, uh, is, is what I want to do in the future. And I need to be able to focus on the things I need to focus on, um, and not have to like micromanage everything else. I want to be able to work with a bigger crew that I can, so I can focus on the tasks that I need to focus on as a director, you know? Because like I said, I, there were a lot of things that I think like fell through the cracks. I mean, specific, like we were talking about earlier that the the night shoot, like there were a lot of mistakes that I made. Not them, not, you know, not Tucker or Haley that I made as the DP director. You know, it just being me and my camera, there were a lot of mistakes that I made. And personally, I feel like it could have been better off had I not made those mistakes. But... There is, you know, some some good that came out of that, of, you know, that shot. I love that shot very much. Um, and it may not have been the same. It might have been different had I not made those mistakes. But in the future, I definitely will have, um, and I have since had bigger crews on the, on the things that I've worked on. Yeah, man, absolutely. That's such an important lesson. I, I love pretty much everything you said. It was awesome. All good stuff. Uh, and I'm excited to sit down right now and, and watch... Uh, the Pine. Talk about it. All right, let's get started. Let's jump into it, man. Um, so yeah, like this is this is the scene that I had to reshoot. I mean, this was me and Tucker and Haley out in the middle of just a park, like a local park, um, you know, near where we were uh, to go and shoot this beginning scene. Like I knew I wanted something to get people's attention, you know, um, because her just waking up in a car and just talking about a dream she had is a lot less interesting than seeing her being chased through this weird, like orange forest, you know? Um, I knew I wanted a moment where it's like, like unsettling and different. And, well, um, yeah. And, the, and the, the cool, cool different thing is, is she's chasing him, you know, there's not yes. a, uh, not a super horror trial. I mean, she's not necessarily running from the attacker. She's trying to get to someone, and that's very cool. I think that's a yeah. very cool, different choice, you know? Yeah, I wanted, you know, like like I talked about, this fear of abandonment. So, you know, so, so she's chasing the people that are running away from her. You know what I mean? Like, she feels like people are, are leaving her, so she wants to chase them as, as much as she can, you know, and, and, and get that, you know, connection that she that she craves that uh yeah, and this right here is where where we would have picked up originally of her just you know waking up in a in a car and i was like you know i think we need a little bit more than that yeah man. and the uh the repetition on the close-up on the eye i love it you do it i think three yeah. times and it, it's very cool yeah i wanted you know i mean like the this this idea of like dreams um and like 
you know, uh, what happens in your dreams, you know, being a part of what happens in your real life, you know, like I like that idea. Um, and so I wanted this idea of her like waking from a dream, you know? So a little thing on the, the production side of this, uh, this entire scene is ADR'd. All of this audio is done after the fact. Uh, I got audio while we were in the car, and they're dr literally driving, so uh, it's very loud, bad audio. And so I was like, all right, guys, it's ADR time. So, I mean, so much of the editing process of this film was all done with audio. I mean, that's that was part of the idea, part of the concept, was to make as much of the horror audio-focused, as much as, as the scares audio-focused, because audio is free. Yeah. <laughs> like um where you know like big Hollywood studio effects are oh, are not. There's the terrifying And, and there's bunny. the cabin. There's the creepy little bunny. Yeah. <laughs> I mean like it uh, it just is filled with so much um so much character well, that it, like This is interesting to just uh it's like a green cabin, you know. It's painted green. It blends right in with the foliage, you know. It's it's very yeah. interesting. It just kind of a perfect I, little place for this. I really wanted to play with that too. I wanted to play with this idea of the green forest and creating juxtaposition with that, with the colors. And so you may notice as the film progresses, you know, uh, Tucker wears a lot of green. Mm -hmm. um, so his, you know, he might be more uh, resistant to, you know, the pines influence than Haley, who's always wearing uh, more contrasting or, or, you know, more contrasting colors, you know, so she'll be wearing like red and stand out against that color or blue where she, you know, it, it doesn't really match as well as, as Tucker, who's usually wearing, um, a, a green or a, a, a dark brown or something that fits into that forest a, a lot more. I mean, this is just Ooh. one of those scenes where, I mean, like just being in the cabin, you add a tiny bit of haze and just use the natural light. And there's such a mood that's already set. Absolutely, man. Like every um, shot in this whole whole little sequence here is just gold. You know, didn't the, the, the ring right there, that wasn't in the script, was it? That was not in the script. That was our actor and producer, Tucker, taking it upon himself to add more. You know, he saw an opportunity and he didn't even tell me before we got there. Uh, we were about to shoot that scene. He said, hey, I had an idea. What do you think? And I was like, I love it. I love I love that he took took the idea and wanted to make it his own, just in the way that Haley did of, you know, you know, taking it and making it her own. I wanted him to do the exact same thing, and that's exactly what he did by, you know, making, taking this ring and having this moment of like, oh, there's more that, you know, and especially by the end when she's disappeared and he's running away from her, um, like that moment of like, you know, he doesn't want to abandon her and yet she will be abandoned, you know? Absolutely, yeah. Where are you? This is also a very, very like creepy, moody sequence where we're kind of looking up at her. I love this shot right here. I've uh, gotten comments on it like, hey, why is she looking in the bag? It's not like he's in there. It's like, yes, but that was the bag he just had. Yeah. That was the bag he just brought in there. So he, she's checking it to see if he, if all the stuff is in there or if, you know, she's just, and then, and then the, uh, the jump scare, the, uh, uh, not a jump scare, jump scare to, you know, put you a little bit on edge and, you know, set a tone. And of course, we have the horny teenagers, so we've got Absolutely, that. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like like I said, I wanted to make it feel kind of 80s and a little schlocky, and, you know, having a couple horny teenagers is never uh, never a bad thing in a horror movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this scene, I, I the direction is she's supposed to knock the photo off that she's about to look at, but like we couldn't quite get it to where it was at a place where she could easily knock it off. So we just had it to where she was just like, Oh, there it is. And that's actually a picture of Tucker and his grandpa. Um, I'm pretty sure that was at the cabin and he was just like, Hey, let's just use this. And I was like, Oh, that's perfect. I love it. Um, and it fits so perfectly, um, with the, you know, this idea of like him and his dad. And it's such a cute picture of him and his grandpa. Um, 
I, you know, it was just, just perfect. Up here for the 4th of July, here before my dad got sick. We shot off fireworks just up the road at the lake. And you didn't get into any trouble? No, it's actually pretty legal to shoot fireworks up here. But my dad didn't want us to. This was, this was such a fun shoot, uh, scene to shoot, you know what I mean? We're all just hanging out in that bedroom and, you know, talking and, you know, like it's all... It's it's that. simple and and you know, my, my but I, I you know it, there's there's complexity there with the characters you know um, I didn't want to do a bunch of you know heavy camera work and editing and all that kind of stuff to distract from the importance of you know these characters not only giving you backstory on the pine but giving you backstory on themselves and and diving a little deeper into each of their characters and and motivations and uh, and all of that. This is a coolie. I like this this shot. It's well composed. You know, kind of see him out of focus, but you can still see his mouth moving. Yeah. And then it's her shots. Just cool. Yeah, I you know I was very I was very very pleased um, with how this scene came out and Tucker and Haley just knocking it out of the park, being being the best. I mean, like during during the audition process, we actually auditioned some some actors. Um, and Tucker was originally just going to produce. It was his cabin, so he just wanted to produce. Um, but I had him reading sides for Steve in the audition process. And so when Haley came in to audition, and it was Haley and, and him reading together, I was like, I found him. Like, it's part, like Haley just embodied everything that I wanted. Like, and she has a very, um, like uh, her experience has very is very physical. So she was like a boxer, and she had done some other action stuff before. So I knew she could handle the physicality of the role when it's necessary. But her uh, tenderness is is immediately what drew me to her as an actress. Like I, you know, she was reading those sides, and I was like, "It's Liz." Like I found her, and then you know, with Tucker, he was Steve. Like I, you know, I didn't have to do any any work to get them to exactly where they needed to be um they were already them you know they were already exactly who i was looking for i was so pleased when when i got them together and and uh and found found that chemistry so this is actually another moment that was found in editing when I was editing this, this scene didn't exist um, until she wakes up. It's supposed to start with her waking up. But in the edit, I was like, I feel like there's more information here that we can give and more context that we can give for the greater idea of what's happening in the scene. And so I actually had Tucker come over, and when we were doing ADR, I wrote out that scene of him you know, having this nightmare of being, quote-unquote, questioned by the pine, you know? It's just a nice moment right there. She tries to wake him up, and it's like gets worse very quickly. I, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, the cool thing about this too is just from a, a, a writing and and directing standpoint is this scene is you know it, it's happening to him, but it's also so much for her. It's so much to oh, feel totally. her fear. You know. Exactly. I mean, like, and another thing, like, like I was talking about with dreams is like obvious and and blender uh, Tucker kind of blending in is obviously this place has more of an effect on him because he's been here before. You know what I mean? This is his childhood cabin. And so whatever is affecting him hasn't quite taken hold of her yet, you know? Um, She's kind of standing outside of it and just afraid of it and seeing what's happening and not understanding any of it. Yeah. And Jake's score just uh, perfectly, so, perfectly so underneath this moment um, was exactly what I wanted and needed for this moment. It was just we, like that slight bit of tenderness yeah, after, the, after, the, yeah. after the fear. I'm guessing oh, you that have a light uh, coming in from the window. I just yeah. love it. I was okay. It is a light. It wasn't. Um, 
and that it was kind of like night. yeah yeah i believe i'm driving the car in this shot is that was that then i don't know because um, I, I know we did some of that when later like i i wasn't there for the shoot but i was there we were out there later and and one point you're like slow down and you just stuck your head out the window with your uh, gimbal and <laughs> like i gotta get yeah. stuff that may have been that moment i'm not i'm not i'm not sure i'm not positive um i i love all of this like leading up into the conversation how you kind of see them talking but you don't really hear what they're saying and and they're just out going through the woods and it's beautiful but as it progresses like this like i thought you were scared of the forest it's a beautiful place i mean look at it but they are completely engulfed by it It it's very cool very scary yeah, that 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 idea of like just being completely surrounded by it—that's something I'll bring up a little bit more yeah. later. Oh, and and this um, right here, where where her fear is literally being left, and he runs off is like, yeah, it's like cruel in so many ways, and yeah, um, like that was one thing that me and Tucker talked about is like he's like, you know, he's kind of a dick, and I was like, yeah, he's kind of a dick. Like that's you know part of what fuels her fear is that he's not great to her you know yeah uh she has that fear of him leaving her because he's very much kind of not great to her you know i I love this moment right here where he runs behind the tree and disappears and then she kind of goes up and we watch her i like that he isn't standing there i love that i love that we prolong this this sense of danger and disappearing with him you know yeah i feel like it would be it would be super tempting to just go oh we got another jump scare and instead it's oh he's gone and we're just stuck looking around the forest. Like, where is he? It prolongs this sense of of danger for her, and it's very. Cool. I love that shot. She runs into the close. So good. An- another one of my favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, again, it's that it's that fear of abandonment. You yeah. Know? It's I don't want it to be like, oh, I'm right here. It's like, oh, it's just a funny joke. No, it, I want no, it to be it's him. Dangerous and scary, and um, I love this here. Uh, how small he is in that frame, fully taken by the pine, is so cool. Yep. Hey, what the hell? Where did you go? I came down here to take a leak. What, did I scare you? Another one of my favorite shots right here. Yeah. Originally, we shot it with coverage, so we shot it with a wide, and we shot it with another close-up on Tuck. But I, you know, in the edit, I was like, this scene isn't about him. This yeah, is it's, not it's, about it's them. For it's her. about her. Yeah. yeah. Um, it it didn't it didn't make sense to cut to Tucker there when it's about her resentment almost of him like not taking her fears seriously you know and this shot where they're walking into the pine also you know yeah. back into it's sorry all of that stuff is very cool to me but you no know, yeah I love that I love that you made that decision just to keep it on her because yeah. it is it's and, it's, and, it's her scene you know and one thing that I tried to do throughout until a certain moment until the ending is keep a sense of nature. So you can always hear nature in the background. Oh, yeah, Unless, absolutely. Uh, except, for when the, except for when they're in the car, you could always hear the nature in the background. And it, it becomes, um, like, infuriating in the best way. You're like, oh, I'm just constantly surrounded by this thing. And In, in both like, a literal way, but uh, and also, like, we're inside a cabin, but it's still out there, and this is how we're going to let you know. I mean, you almost you almost tune it out by the mm-hmm. end. Like, it's almost not there. You don't notice it until it's until it's not there, you know, you don't, you don't realize it's there until it's gone. Um, and that was one thing I really tried to do with that final scene is create that, that moment. Um, and this is one of those scenes that, like I said, like to create the fear, all of this is audio. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in the, in the, 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 the on set, I literally was just cueing. I had Andrew behind me cueing where she needs to be looking to hear the sounds that she's hearing, and I'm off camera describing what she's hearing. Um, so it's like one of those moments, like on set, like it's not not nearly as scary as it as I hope it is in the actual film, you know? Yeah, and oh, dude, your camera work here is so nice. Where it's just this kind of wonder, just on her, kind of seeing this. We go to that shot of outside of, of the woods, but then we come back and it turns from a shot on her to a, a big close on him. Comes yeah. up. It's just so it's so good. It makes me feel like I'm right there with him, you know? That's my dad. That's my dad. No, 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 can't be your daddy. Can't be your daddy. So, you know, so talking about the pine a little bit, you know, it's it's got it's got some motives, you know? It's got... First, it questions, you know, like, who, why are you here? Like, who are you here with? Uh, you know, 
And then the next thing is to try to pull it out. You know, it, it, it fake, it knows his, it, the pine knows his dad. And so it uses his dad's voice to, to try to pull him out into the, into the pine, yeah. pull him out into the forest to take him. And, uh, she does not allow that. She does not want to be abandoned, you know? Yeah. She does not want to be left behind by, by the forest, you know, or, you know, be, be left behind by, by Tut running into the forest to find his dad, who is obviously not alive anymore. Yeah. I like that you, you, you spend time with them as they're, like, going back to bed and show that this has really affected them. They're very spooked out right now. And then we're back into it, you know? Yeah. You give it just that little beat. It's very nice. And uh, by the way, the voices for uh, for the the dad and the voices for the sister are uh, my fiance Megan and her father. Yeah. Her dad decided that <laughs> was was willing to help us out with uh, with the voice for the dad, and I thought he was just perfect. For this entire scene, it's me on camera and uh, Andrew standing behind me and uh, just literally pointing at walls, saying, like, you know, uh, react to that, react to that, react to that um, the entire time. You know, and me, you know, and I'm behind the camera just cueing all of these reactions, saying, oh, it's getting louder, it's getting louder. Like, you can't even hear yourself think, like you're in pain. It's like loud, 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 you know. Until we get to a point where, you know, so the, the pine first tried to pull him out, tried to convince him to come out, and now it's trying to to scare him, you know. Trying, She's trying to say, oh, obviously it's just neighbors, obviously it's just kids trying to scare us. Yeah. Um, when in reality it's a lot more sinister. Well, and it cool from a staging point, I, you know, just, I hadn't thought about it until just right now. You know, the first time he gets up to go out, he doesn't even make it out of the room. And then yeah. this time he's closer to the door, closer to the danger. Yeah. That, that's very cool. I hadn't, I hadn't picked up on that. Oh, wait. There's a third. Yeah. <laughs> what was the, uh, the decision to do the, the crossfades here? Because I think there was a version where you didn't have them. There was a version where I didn't have it. In the script, this is supposed to be hours of time going by. And it just, in the, in the edit, it felt like it was... 15 seconds before they fall asleep. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I wanted it to feel longer. And so those crossfades, I hope, made you feel like a more progression or more of a, a passage of time. That was the yeah. idea anyways, was in, in, to give it a little bit more breath. Oh, there's um, the re repetition of the eye shot again. Very good. Once again. Um, that's such a great moment, that little, little camera move where she just turns and he's gone. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that was... You know, like I said, as much as I tried to do as much in one shot as I could do in, you know, five yeah. shots. You know, try to try to compress time a little bit. I love how he fades into darkness. Was that? Did you have to do much? Like, well, I, that's crazy to me that you got him just to fully disappear into the night when he's running off. That's uh, that was literally just, you know, a bright light and uh, yeah. and dark shadow. You know. I love how he's shrouded in darkness with that light behind him, man. So good. Yeah, that was that was that was the idea was for you to not be able to fully see him. Mm -hmm. You know, you see his shape, but you don't see his face. You don't see something a little sinister about the lighting there. It's very nice. Yeah, that's and that's the tol the whole idea. I mean, this is one of those scenes that we shot. This shot right here is we did this a lot. We started with her being in a much more scared place, and as we progress and progress and progress it got angrier and angrier and angrier and by the end i was like you're pissed you're tired of this like i want you to have some fight in there um and that was one thing that hel Haley helped me a lot to create was that like fight and anger this right here this shot this was a uh a pickup later right this was a pickup later um i had a shot in the edit and it just did not work and then we got a pickup all right, so this is the scene. This is the entire one that took place out in the forest late at night. And, you know, like, 
There's all that like camera movement that makes me cringe, but I think it does know, really dude, sell I, this like I, frantic action. Yeah, I. Oh. Steve. This right here, it's just so. I love how you take a moment in the middle of like an intense chase to have her still like, where is he? Yeah. Where is he? I love that. And there it is, That's my favorite shot in the whole film. Money shot, man. And Jake killing it on the score once again. And then. And there it is, like the is. the silence. You know what I mean? That you know that moment where we're no longer in the real world. We're in the pine. Like I really wanted to, I wanted to make the green like sickly and, you know, like where before it was, you know, muted and, and, and not so in your face. Now it's like sickly and weird. Um, and that silence, that like moment where you can hear all these crickets and cicadas and stuff. And then it's all just gone. And earlier, like you were saying, like that moment where sh they're just surrounded by forest. That's this entire section. Like I just wanted it to feel like she's engulfed in it, you know? Yeah, and, and keeping her small in the frame like this is just brilliant, you know? Yeah, like it, it really your... sells that, oh, I'm I'm in like the pine. It's got me now. I can't I can't yeah. get out. You know, she's just like circling back and forth, trying to find her way out, and there's just no way out. Yeah, and then coming, going close to her too, and then back to these wides is so good. I just, I, I love, I love how you, uh, how you did this scene. It's just very, very well done. And finally, she's back to to a place that she recognizes. She's back to a, a familiar place, and then she finds finds the flashlight. She realizes, wait, am I? Have I just done one giant circle? She finds the place on the ground that she was sitting before. She's been circling for hours, and she's still here. I love this this music here too because you do it at the beginning but in a reverse. Where this you go crescendo stop Steve and in the beginning you open it with crescendo up and then into that shot of the light coming in and then the music kicks off from there. It's just, it's nice little yeah. you know beginning and end kind of open and close this thing. Yeah. Shout out to all the crew, shout out to all the cast. Special thanks to you for helping yeah. me so much with the script and all the behind the scenes stuff. An autopilot pictures autopilot, production, yeah. hell yeah. Excellent. So like I said, you know, you know, there's that moment where you can hear her voice calling out and no return, and then you hear his voice calling out with no return. So you know they're in the same place, but they're in different places. You yeah, know, it's it's excellent, man. It's just really good. Like I said, you kind of open us with a cool scene, but also kind of a reversal on a traditional horror thing, and that gets me really interested. So you got me from the beginning, and you just held me the whole way. Um, well, I appreciate it. Excellent work, dude. It's awesome. Thank you. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm very. Very proud to to have it finished. I'm very pleased to have it done. I'm very pleased for people to now be able to to see it and hopefully get spooked out. Especially right now, we're in a we're in a weird time, so I think it's the perfect time to. We're all stuck in our homes, so why not watch a, a short film about cabin fever? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, what better time to support kind of smaller up and coming people? You know, people also like this, very true. Support short films, and and it's cool that we're doing this. That you were you were very like reached out to me to want to do a commentary with some Q and a stuff. Cause it is cool. It's, you know, BTS stuff you rarely get for, you know, low budget, um, yeah. DIY short films. And I, I think this is a great idea and I'm glad people get a, get a watch it and get a listen to this and get all your insights. It's super cool, man. 
yeah, I hope I hope people learned some things and took some took some important notes away from this. Uh, and I hope people will, will take this uh, knowledge and take hopefully be inspired in some way, whatever form that takes, to go out and make something cool of their own. Absolutely, dude. Yeah, and as always, it's been a pleasure talking with you. I'm glad we did this. Yeah, me too. This has been fun. Yeah, man. All right. Well, it's time to go. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Don't get stuck in the pine.